Hello my sweet friends and welcome back to my channel. I hope you were all doing well. I have the funnest folio to share with you today. It is so fast and so easy and it was also a scrap your stash project. So you know I love that and I also got to use a printable from my very own shop. This is the Americana Frames printable and it is so perfect for all of those summer holidays. I will say that this was so much fun to create that I did create an additional one just for funsies while I had uh, my papers out in. So I think you will enjoy this. If that sounds good to you, then stick with me and we will make it together. So I'm going to start with two sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock and cut them down to a six inch width. I have all four pieces here already cut. I'll take three of them and cut them to eight inches. So now I have three pieces that are six by eight. And the final piece will be eight and a quarter that will allow enough space for the spine. I've got my scoreboard now and I'm going to take the three pieces that are cut to be eight inches long and score them at four inches. This is going to give us a finished page size of six by four. So the next step is to take all the smaller portions that were cut off and go ahead and trim those down to be three and a half inches wide. This is what is going to be your pockets. And bring that to the scoreboard and score that at one and three quarter. Next, you'll want to go ahead and fold on that score line and give that a nice crease. I'm going to attach the pages here and then we will add the pattern paper before we add the pockets on top. So I'm going for my two glue combo that's double sided adhesive tape. along with my Tombow. I'm just keeping that in from the edge so it doesn't squeeze out. And I'll join these portions together by bringing the corners together and then keeping it straight and even along the top and bottom. Then I'll just repeat that process one more time for the next set of pages. Now we have the pages for the inside base all ready to add the pattern paper. You're only going to need one set of measurements for these pages because they're only one size all the way throughout and that includes the back and front cover. So for the pattern paper it's going to be five and seven eighths inch high by three and seven eighths inch wide and I am just choosing to pair patterns that go together. 
you can mix and match them if you choose to do that. And I'm just going to add these with my double-sided adhesive tape. This one isn't necessarily a patriotic pattern, but it does have all the right color palettes, so I think it's a nice addition to this album. It's sometimes easier to flip it so that you have the longest side facing closest to you. Here is our pattern for the last set of pages. So now that we have all of the base of the page covered, we can come in and add those pockets. Now, remember, we'll have four of them, and I want to add my adhesive just along the outside here. I'm going to just use my double-sided tape again, and it is a good idea to add the adhesive all at one time, but pull from only one section as you work along. So let's take off the tape from just this one side. Then hold it where it creases and pull the page up and go ahead and rest it right into that crease so that you can get it on evenly and straight. Press one side into place and then remove the other portion and fold it over. So this is going to be the process that we follow for all of these pockets for the next three pages. And we'll just go ahead and throw a little music on and speed that up for you so that you can still see the process, but we'll get through it much faster. Okay, so now we have pockets on our pages. I want to add my double-sided tape along the outside edge here. We're going to add an additional layer of the cardstock, not only to hide that cut edge, but to give it a little bit nicer of a finished look and increase the layers for more sturdiness. So I'm just doing this now and then we'll add that additional piece. It did have some extra room in it. If you remember, we included an extra quarter of an inch so that it will accommodate the bulk of the center here. So let's go ahead and remove one side of the double-sided adhesive and don't forget to add a layer of our Tombow. So just like in the previous layers, we'll bring our corners together and then the side and the bottom as well to make sure that it goes on straight. I'm going to bring our scoreboard back in for this step. We're not going to add adhesive to 
the spine because there's only just three small portions, but I do want to score it and I'll just bring those folds up to a crease in the scoreboard and then fold it over. We do want it to have a nice crisp edge. And so let's go ahead and fold this over again and repeat that process, just bringing it up to one of those grooves and scoring it along there. So now we're gonna get the back page ready. I'm going to pull the tape again and add more Tombow. And I'm just going to very carefully fold this over and bring these corners together and work my way back so that I've got it measured out exactly where I want to fall on the edge that will be most noticeable, which is where you're going to hold it to turn those pages. So go ahead and give it a good pressure while your glue sets up and then you can see that we have added that extra layer for finishing and for sturdiness. So let's go ahead and add our back page on now. So I'm just going to choose the same pattern for the front and back. I think that just looks a little bit nicer. You don't have to do that if you're working through your stash, but you definitely do want to add your pattern paper to the back to make it finished all the way around. So let's go ahead and open this up to our pockets. And remember, just like our pages are the same size, all of these pockets will be the same size as well. And so that definitely helps to make the cutting process go so much faster. So the portions that are going to be on the pocket are going to be five and seven eighths inch high by one and five eighths of an inch wide so that we're still going to get our nice border of that colorful cardstock and I am using scraps like I mentioned so I just picked some patterns that were a nice contrast of color and pattern you see this is very light and the pattern is very large and I'm pairing that with this overall bunting which is a very busy and much more colorful and so I think this makes for a good layering effect. You definitely notice that there's a pocket there and I'm just going to go ahead and center all of these as I work along and I think this is another great way to get through your scraps as well because there's always just a little bit of something hanging around from another project and very likely you have made something that has things that coordinate so that will be easier for this step because you already know they all work together. This happens to be a piece from Authentic, and it was left over from a project that I made last summer. This is meant to be a uh, summer holiday themed project, so I knew that my patriotic patterns would work well. So for the last page, I'm going to go ahead and repeat that very large wood grain. I think it goes well with those stars. And now that we have six pockets on the inside, we can consider how to decorate these. Now you don't want to interfere with the functioning of the pocket. So we just want to have something, a small bit here that will be uh, on the top of the pocket so you can move things in and out. I chose to use that printable from my shop. It's the Americana frames. I think these very sweet, more vintage colors coordinate well with the papers that I picked. And I did cut those out after printing them. I chose four that I liked for this project. And then I also added it to a heavy 110 pound cardstock so that it will remain very sturdy when things are moved in and out. So because this will overlap the edge of the pocket, you do want to keep your adhesives close to one side only so that you don't inadvertently seal that pocket up. I'm gonna just flip this over and attach it here. 
keeping it as straight as I can, just following the edge of the pocket. So since we put the double-sided tape on as well as the glue, we can just continue to work along and include the rest of these images. So I'm just going to add these in the same way as I did the first one. And I will also mention that I just went ahead and added a little bit of stickles. It's not an all over pattern. I just put it where I thought there would be a nice accent from the glittery effect. And so that's just another way to get some additional detail without adding more bulk. I'm just repeating that same process for all three of these pages. If you have a collection that you're working with, for example, a Christmas collection, you may have a cut apart image sheet that coordinates. So that would be one way to get a really well put together look because you already know they're designed to coordinate. Let's go ahead and put this last piece on. The last page and I think once you have pockets in place it's a good idea to include some inserts in some of the pockets and then leave other pockets empty so that items that are flatter can be included such as mementos or keepsakes that you don't want to adhere down to the book so I've got my cardstock cut to be five and a quarter by three and three quarters. Remember, you're going to have them a little bit shorter because we added that double-sided adhesive tape. And so we want to make sure that we have room for that. So let's go ahead and add these underneath those sweet little printed images. I'll take one for this one. and then one for the last page as well. This is going to really help add some sturdiness to the book as well. So you can see how nice and thick that it's gotten. And we do have <coughs> to finish the front cover. This is a good time to add a ribbon trim if you like that for a closure. So I just chose one that I thought would coordinate well. This is from Really Reasonable Ribbon, and I do want to just pull off enough so that I will have a generously sized bow. I'll add just a bit of double-sided tape in the middle. So once I stretch this out, I can have it temporarily tacked on the paper will hold it in place better once we get to that layering. So we just want to hold this still so that it is straight and even. So let's just go ahead and push that into the tape. So as I mentioned, the pattern paper for the cover on the front and back is going to be the same. And I'm just going to go ahead and center that for the base layer. I did die cut another piece of that wood grain and I'm just going to utilize that to kind of neutralize a little bit of that busy pattern in the background and then I'll add a layering pattern as well. Just some excess from that insert that we created so that we could use up more of that offcut. So I have my image cut here, just the same as the inside. I put that on the extra thick cardstock, and this time I added the double-sided foam tape so that I can build a little dimension. I'm going a little bit higher and toward the right of center, just so that I can leave some room for my flower arrangement. So this is a combination of 
flowers from Really Reasonable Ribbon, and then also some from Little Brie Crafts. I've added a loopy twine bow for each side and a little netting. And instead of having my foliage being cut from green, I decided to stick with that blue card stack just so that I could stay in that same kind of a color palette and so this is going to be added down here and you'll notice I did add some of that beautiful ribbon to this as well it kind of increases the amount of room for this and anchors the bottom corner very well so I'm just going to attach that with my hot glue and be aware to keep all of those bits within the cover there I did pull a couple of sweet little charms and I want to go ahead and add those just as I do with the string and I'll just go ahead and press that into a little hot glue I'll cut the excess and top that with a vintage button to cover the cut ends of the string to have a couple of sequins here. I'm just going with a vintagey white. It isn't quite a bright white because the collection papers that I have are a little bit more vintagey as well. So let's go ahead and add those with our Tombow. I did like how the frame image has a nice border there, so I didn't worry about adding any blue cardstock around that for layering to differentiate the different patterns. I did, however, use some of the stickles on the details for that tear tray. And once again, I didn't go all over and crazy. I just made sure to focus on the accents so that it would look more detailed. So that's the cover. We can go ahead and tie this up and this will be a sweet way to capture all of those summer holiday memories. Now, as I try to do when I share projects, my goal is to uh, create a versatile design that will be useful for many different collections or themes. And so I've just gone ahead and created an additional one here. I decided to try out the Christmas theme on this one and I did switch to a six by six paper pad. I think that is so perfect. There was a very little off cuts for that because I was able to use the six by six sheet on the A side for the page and then the B side for the portion that was cut off and flipped it over and that would cover the pocket. So I was really happy with the frugal use of paper on that. And so for this design, I used exactly the same uh, design and the process and all of the same measurements and so I did include a little bit of a larger flower arrangement for this one. Um, I just think that Christmas is a little uh, good reason to go over the top with the details. So I did that and we've got our Santa here and then each of these have an additional image just like the first project in our inserts as well. So this is gonna be a great place to capture holiday memories or to maybe pass along recipes for your family. And so this is going to be just the same design, but I like to show the versatility by switching out a collection. And so this was also really fun to make and it took very little uh, cardstock and pattern paper, which makes it a good batch project because you can make many of these very quickly. And so that's all for today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments by uh, giving me a big ol' thumbs up and letting me know what kind of project you would like for me to share next. So that's gonna be it. And if you're not already, I would love for you to join my crafty little family by hitting that subscribe button and also the bell. I will link the 
images here that I use. They are the Americana frames image from my shop. And you can also find links to our social media sites in the description below. As always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day. And I thank you so much for watching. Bye.